So the battle for the best budget smartphone of 2021, so far at least, has really heated up these last couple of weeks. Xiaomi pretty much impressed us out of the gates with its excellent Redmi Note 10 Pro, but then lately we've had the likes of the Moto G100, the Realme 8 Pro, and that excellent Poco X3 Pro. A lot of pro action going on basically. And now Xiaomi is coming back swinging to make sure it doesn't lose its best budget smartphone crown with the fresh new Mi 11 Lite. And that's enough chatter, let's actually whip the Mi 11 Lite out of its box, take you on a full on tour of that hardware and the software so you know exactly what to expect ahead of my in-depth review. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, so let's see what you actually get in the box. First up, not a massive surprise, one Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite. You've also got your rubber Johnny cover to protect the Mi 11 Lite from harm. You've got one Super Chub power adapter. You've got your Type-C USB cable. And uh oh, this isn't a good sign, a Type-C to 3.5mm headphone adapter. All right, so that's everything in the box. Now let's check out the very shiny indeed Mi 11 Lite. And like most budget smartphones, this is a bit of a handful, unsurprisingly, at just over 6.5 inches, but it does feel rather light. I'm definitely impressed uh, by just how lightweight this thing is, in fact. And that'll be helped considerably by the fact that the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite is completely constructed from plastic. You've got a plastic arse, good bit of plastic edging wrapping all the way around it, and then of course you do have a glass front. No pre-installed screen protector, however, here on the UK model. And yeah, as you can see there, it is a very shiny rear end here on the Mi 11 Lite. They have gone full gloss for that. It is basically a mirror finish. Very handy, of course, if you just want to check out your hair on the move. Uh, yep, still got f***ing none. And I really like that Xiaomi has used the same sort of camera design here for the Mi 11 Lite. Thought that looked rather funky on the Mi 11 and it definitely is rather pleasing to the eye here as well. But of course the one problem with a shiny, a glossy smartphone like this is that as soon as my greasy mitts get all over it, it is going to be looking like an absolute freaking horror show. Definitely make sure you've got your buffing cloth on standby. And yes, as feared, there is absolutely no headphone jack action here on the Mi 11 Lite either. Uh, but anyway, let's see if there's any juice in the tank, get it all powered up and then tour the rest of the hardware and that software as well. And if we just ease open that slot as well, you'll see that it is a double-sided SIM tray, so you can put two SIMs in at once, but sadly no space for any micro SD memory cards. Alrighty, so the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite all set up, and like basically every other Xiaomi, Redmi, etc. smartphone that has come along in 2021, you've got the latest, freshest Android 11, and slapped on top of that, you've got that Mi UI 12. And apologies if you've seen my other Xiaomi uh, phone videos, I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself, but Mi UI 12 is definitely the best iteration so far by quite some margin. You've got Features like that app straight in there. So you've got a kind of a stock Android vibe, like the Google Discover feed as well. But then you get brilliant MIUI bonus bits as well, like that excellent control center, which has been uh, heavily inspired by iOS. And lots of very respectable customization options in here as well, because you've got an OLED screen, for instance, you've got an always on display. Lots of different designs to choose from in there, some of which, let's face it, are absolutely batch. And I certainly don't believe uh, that this particular mantra is very helpful at all because if you always believe that something wonderful is about to happen, surely that just means you're constantly going to be disappointed in life. Now it looks like you can actually edit it though. There we go, that's more like it. And because that Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite is a bit of a big bugger, like basically every other smartphone around right now, it's great to see that you've got that one-handed mode action once again. Definitely an absolute godsend, especially if you're trying to like keep a five-year-old mentalist under control uh, while out and about. One of the biggest pains in my ass when it comes to Xiaomi smartphones though is the sheer number of crapware that comes pre-installed on this thing. You've got the likes of TikTok, you've got your LinkedIn's, your Facebooks. You've got a whole bunch of Xiaomi's own brand apps as well, many of which I don't use, like the Mi Browser, the Mi Remote and Mi Video. The security one's quite good though, that just gives you fast access to some of the better features on there for cleaning up uh, the phone, blocking any numbers that have been pestering you and uh, good old Game Turbo of course, which I'll be touching on in a bit. On the security side of things, the Xiaomi Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite uses an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor back in fashion very much these days, but it doesn't actually look like an edge-mounted scanner. It just looks like your standard power button, kind of similar to what you've got on the Poco F3, but you'll see if I rest my digit against that button, you're immediately unlocked straight into your smartphone. So very impressive stuff indeed. And as backup to that, you've also got a spot of face recognition as well, which as you can see, just as nippy as that fingerprint scanner barely even see the lock screen. And for your storage, you've got a choice of 64 or 128 gigs worth here on the Mi 11 Lite as well, depending on how much cash you've got free to spunk up. But as I mentioned before, no micro SD memory card support to expand that. 
Now it's great to see OLED displays making it along on more affordable smartphones these days and the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite definitely does not disappoint there. You've got a 6.55 inch OLED display with a full HD plus resolution so reasonably crisp despite the fact that it's quite a big one. Impressively you've got both HDR support here and also 10-bit color reproduction as well. Those colors are nice and poppy on the default setting but you can scale it back if you want to uh, get more realistic natural looking colors. But yeah that HDR support extends to streaming services like Netflix. You can just enjoy gorgeous looking contrast and again those natural looking visuals with only a dinky little cutout wedged away in the corner there to intrude on matters when you do decide to go for a bit of full screen action. If you dive on into the display settings, uh, as I mentioned before, you've got some control over the color output there, and you can also bump up the refresh rate, which is stuck at 60 hertz by default, to that higher 90 hertz effort. And that definitely makes everything nice and smooth when you're flicking around at the UI. One nil to Sunderland, get in. And more good news on the media front as well, because it is a stereo speaker setup here on the Mi 11 Lite, which goes a little way at least to make up for the complete lack of headphone jack action. Just bump up the volume, see if it's any good. So yeah, Poco may well have taken a huge steam and elephant dump all over Samsung's parade, but is the Galaxy A52 5G still a worthy alternative to that Poco F3? So yeah, impressive stuff. It's definitely a little bit tinny, a little bit of audio distortion when you bump it up to that maximum volume but that's probably mostly because the maximum volume is ear shatteringly loud really really good so that should be great if you're in a quite a noisy environment just want to enjoy a bit of video action and that top speaker does more than pull its weight as well it's a lot more beefy than the uh, the pathetic efforts you'll get on certain other smartphones pixel i'm looking at you so what about the grunt here well it's actually the snapdragon 732g chipset powering the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite. That's the exact same platform that you'd find stuffed inside of the Redmi Note 10 Pro. I'm certainly expecting to see the odd little judder and pause here and there when you're flicking through apps or whatever, mostly because MIUI is such a heavy overlay. But gamers should be able to get uh, playing on the likes of Call of Duty and PUBG and shenanigans like that without too much of a struggle. And as usual, you've got the brilliant game Turbo features on board as well, which offers all kinds of nifty little tools. So for instance, you can bring up a little browser window just to help you, you know, if you're stuck on a particularly tough bit. Uh, you've also got notifications blocking, all kinds of stuff. These icons are kind of meaningless until you've actually, um, you know, got to grips with game space and played around with it a bit. But uh, once you know what each one does, then it's pretty damn good. And yeah, I just had a quick blast on Call of Duty Mobile to test out how that all went and on those high detail settings and high frame rate as well just a single little tiny judder right at the very start of the match and then the rest was buttery smooth even though the action was pretty intense lots of people run around like headless chickens not really sure what was going on so yeah the Mi 11 Lite will certainly suit anyone who wants to do a bit of the PUBG's bit of the Call of Duty mobiles uh, for more demanding games like Genshin Impact you'll probably will see quite a stuttery frame rate though so uh, yeah you've got to know your limits and of course, no 5G support here on the standard Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite, although there's been a lot of talk about a 5G version of the Lite emerging at around the same sort of time as this one. As for your battery tech, well, it's a bit scaled back compared with the likes of the Redmi Note 10 Pro. What you get is a 4,250 milliamp cell, which should hopefully still keep you going all day touch words. So far I haven't had much drop off despite the fact as you can see they've been active for almost two full hours downloading a load of apps and basically the screen on the full time. But of course I will be fully testing out the battery life for my in-depth Mi 11 Lite review. And you've got support for 33 watt fast charging on the Mi 11 Lite as well. It's not the nippiest around but not dreadful by any stretch of the imagination nor wireless charging of course because of the old plastic backing and it's quite a rare feature at this sort of price point anyway. So let's finish up with a look at that triple lens rear camera. My God, that back is getting pretty horrifically greasy already. So it's a 64 megapixel primary snapper, but by default you will shoot 16 megapixel images because the Mi 11 Lite, like pretty much every smartphone these days, uses four in one pixel binning. But if you dive into the more section, you see you get plenty of bonus modes stuffed away in there as usual. There is a 64 meg mode if you want to shoot at that maximum resolution, as long as the lighting conditions are good. You also have an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens as well, which you can uh, kind of, it gives you a different viewpoint, but as you can see there you'll have distortion around the edges uh, everything will look a little bit uh, freaky deaky and don't expect you know natural looking colors or anything and there is also yes a five megapixel macro lens if you absolutely insist on taking macro shots I still absolutely do not see the point at all but it's there if you want it and you've got all the usual bonus modes on here including the likes of the portrait mode to give you a nice uh, bokeh style background effect which you can of course tweak to your own personal preferences and plenty more stuff to keep you amused in there as well including good old night mode for those low light shots and uh, a pro mode as well if you want to get fiddling around with the likes of the white balance the shutter speed to change up the iso 
And with this, you can shoot just at the standard 16 megapixel or, again, that maximum 64 effort. And on the video front, you'll shoot at Full HD resolution by default, but you'll be able to bump that up to 4K level as well at 30 FPS, otherwise 1080p at 60 FPS. If you want to shoot video with that ultra wide angle lens though, you are stuck at that default 1080p at 30 FPS, you can't bump it any higher. And then last up around front, my own personal favourite of course, the selfie camera, uh, which in this case on the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite is a 20 megapixel shooter. And this comes with all the usual portrait smart and all that other good stuff as well, if you want to make yourself looking super sexy, oh yeah. And there you have it, that in a nutshell is the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite. As I say, I'll be fully testing out that camera tech and every other aspect of this budget blow for my in-depth review. But hopefully that's at least uh, helped. I'll just give you a quick tour of the hardware, the software, all those specs and all those other delicious bits. I'm hoping to do a full-on comparison with this and the Redmi Note 10 Pro, the Realme 8 Pro and what's the other one, the Poco X3 Pro at some point as well. So stay tuned for all that delightful stuff. Definitely let me know your thoughts on the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite down below. And please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.